Okay, to add some contrast, we're going to do what we've seen many, many times before. I'm going to go into the Layers palette, and I'm going to add a Curves layer. So this is a new adjustment layer icon at the bottom, Curves, and that's going to pop up this Curves dialog here. And all I'm going to do is just do a fairly strong contrast curve. And because we're going to mess around a lot with colour and light later on, I'm not going to fret too much about whether or not I'm getting this entirely right. The, the balance of, of tones in this image is actually pretty good either side of the middle point anyway. So um, I'm just going to go for a, a fairly straightforward contrast curve. So if I just turn that on and off in the layers palette, you can see what that's doing. But it's really pushing those colours that we've got there with the, uh, with the very strong cyan um, pretty way off now. So the next step is going to be to try and bring those colours back to more something the kind of thing we want them to be. Um, and the way Jolie did this um, uh, is is actually something I'm seeing a lot of people do. It's, it's not the way I have tended to do things, but uh, Jolie used a colour balance layer. It's another, curves, another adjustment layer, um, and it's a colour balance layer, which brings up this window here. Now let's just um, mess around a little here. So we, we know that there's too much cyan in this. We can see right away that all of the... Um, everything is tinged with a cyan. Uh, we're working on the mid-tones at the moment. We'll we'll also work on the shadows and the highlights, um, which is what these uh, radio buttons at the bottom here are doing. Um, but just working on the mid-tones, just to get an idea of roughly where we want. So I'm going to drag some cyan out by dragging this red slider up. And you can see right away what that's doing. So suddenly the, uh, the hair here starts to go a lovely orangey reddy colour. Um, we're getting a bit of sort of yellowy light, uh, sort of orangey light in the, in the skin. So let me just drag that up to about there. And I'll, just to make it really obvious what's happening, I'm going to just flick the preview on and off. So that's where we started and that's where we are now. But we've got plenty more to do with this. I think the other thing that we need to do here, if you look at the the red on these, uh, the, the dresses here, um, need just a little more red magenta in there. Now, magenta is sort of a, a purpley kind of red, but if I drag that to the left, we're also taking green out of the image. And that cyan is pretty close to green, so um, taking green out is going to help us quite a lot as well. So if I just drag that down a little bit, you can see already we're starting to get the kind of colours that we're used to seeing in Jolene's images. So if I just, I once again, turn the preview on and off. And now that's just the um, uh, just the mid-tones that we worked on there. So let's, let's go and have a quick mess around with the shadows as well. So this is now going to operate on the darker parts of the image, obviously shadows being the darker parts. And if I just do the same sort of edit again, you can see that in, in the darker parts, which is certainly things like the front of the dress, the back of the hair, um, you know, all the shadow areas are starting to make quite a visible difference. And I don't want to go too far because these dresses are mostly shadow tones. So I don't want to drag too much magenta into the dresses. Um, so I think I'm probably, I'm probably going to go... Let's just turn that on and off again, just see how we're doing. Just keep comparing to where we started. Um, we, we're already so much better than where we started that I think it's, it's going to be difficult to, to really judge whether or not each individual edit is, is, uh, is better or worse. Um, but let's just keep going and carry on into highlights. And the highlights, of course, are places like um, uh, the, the dead girl's face, the uh, back of the, the top of her arm, um, maybe the top of her hair a little bit. And I'm just going to drag once more a little bit of red in um, and a little bit of magenta in just to... I think we probably want to go... I'm just doing this by eye at the moment. I do have the numbers that, that Jolene used in her edit, but I, I, I prefer to try and do these videos um, as though I was doing them myself so that you so that you know you're hearing what I'm thinking basically whatever goes from my brain comes out of my mouth um, so I think personally I think there looks pretty good we've got a pretty warm sort of tone on the face so it is it is flesh tones but it's but it's warm flesh tones and in particular I love this hair here that that really interests me and the other thing that I'm looking at here is that we've got a very strong um, contrast between the uh, sort of cyan blue in the background of the water and the sort of magenta red in the dresses and I personally find that um, it separates the two very nicely for me and I think that's really helping the image and I think that's one of the things that Jolene did very well in her versions of these images was to make the colours really striking and a really important part of the way that the image holds together so I'm going to just quickly show you once more uh, where we started and where we finished with that colour balance edit and I'm going to press OK on that 
Now, as a final step before um, saying that this particular image is ready for the rest of the process, I think we just need to tidy up some of the other little bits and bobs on this image. We can see there's a, there's a shadow going through the background there, so we probably want to take that out. Uh, there's a few bits of untidiness around. I've missed a little bit in the corner there. A few little bits of untidy colour around the end of the foot there. Uh, a little bit of smudging going on here. So there's a few bits and bobs that need tidying up. So let's let's go and do that. We'll have another bitmap layer. So above the top of everything else, let's just do another bitmap layer, and we'll call this tidy up. And we can close that for the time being. Uh, once again, I'm going to go to the clone stamping tool. I'm going to grab my graphics tablet and I'm just going to start painting out some of these artifacts that we've got here. Now, remember we are sampling all current and below, so this is the, this is the top layer in the stack, so we're sampling everything below, uh, and that means that the colours that we're sampling and painting in are being affected by the um, uh, the colour uh, balance layer that we just created and they're being affected by the um, contrast layer that we put in, that curves contrast layer so this layer that we're making now has got colours on it that are dependent on those layers below so we can't go around moving this layer now this layer is just not going to work if you move it somewhere else in the stack because the colours will be all wrong so just be aware of that where, the, where you put these layers in the stack does matter it does make a difference now, one of the things I'm doing here, um, just while I've been wittering on, um, I noticed if I just turn this layer on and off for a moment, grab my mouse, it's much easier with the mouse. If I just turn this layer on and off, can you see there's a lot, you might not see this on the video, it depends on how the video compresses, but on the right hand side here, just where I've got my cursor now, there's a lot of grain. And on the left-hand side here, where we where we cloned out the vignette, um, there's a lot less grain. And the reason for that is that I did a lot of blending of colours back and forth and back and forth. And in the process of blending bits back and forth using this clone stamping tool, it's actually sort of smoothed out a lot of that grain. So what I'm going to what I've been doing just while I've been talking, and if I turn that on, uh, you can see I've taken out the bit of shadow at the top there. But that's also I've also been smoothing out that grain in the same way, just by grabbing colour from other places and layering it in by not pressing not. Pressing Pressing totally hard on the on the um, the pen and uh, just sort of blending those things together, which is just taking a little bit of that grain away. Um, and the reason it's doing that is because obviously you're sort of smushing the colours together, and that generally takes out detail, which is in fact what the grain is. Of course, it's just detail. So now, once again, I'm going to just turn off my alignment and sample from up here, just in the middle of this big patch of colour, because I just want to do that same trick again where I grab some darker from above and I just blend it through this area where I think we're a little bit a little bit too light at the moment bear in mind by the way that all of this area that we're working on here is going to be um, there's going to be a lot of detail added in the future because this is going to be where all those clouds are going to go so it's not imperative that this is absolutely perfect in this particular image. But of course, you know, when you're working on your own images, you want to work from the absolute best source images you can. You want to make everything as clean as you can before you start off onto the next stage, because the better the source image, the better the final image. You want to keep everything as clean and as tidy as possible, and you'll get the best possible results later. So, once again, there's a lot of grain here, and there's not a lot of grain here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab some colour out of this area that we cloned into, just tidying up that, that bit in the corner that I missed there. Grabbing a little bit of a lighter colour and just, once again, blending it through this area here and hopefully making that more of a gradual colour change. And then I'm going to grab some colour from here with a slightly larger brush, just pressing lightly, just painting into that grainy area. Not pressing very hard, just sort of a third pressure, 33% thereabouts, well, if it's possible to judge how hard you're pressing. And it's just taking out some of that grain. 
And of course we could do the same on the legs and things like that, but I, I don't want to damage detail there, so I'm going to try and leave those legs alone. Now we've still got that area in the top little right hand corner with the shadow there that needs to be removed as well. So let's just go up there and zoom out a little. And I'm seeing a little uh, blob there, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to just clone that out as well. So um, I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool for that, so I've just pressed... No, no, okay. No, that was still the, that was still the clone stamping tool. Spot healing brush tool. There we go, that's gone. Now back to the clone stamping tool. And we're looking for a good source. Um, oh, there's another one of those hot pixels there, look. Let's just zap down to that. J for the, um, J for the spot healing brush tool. Click on that and it's gone. Right, and then we're going to just do the same thing as we've done before. We're going to grab the clone stamping tool. I'm going to with remember we've got alignment still off, so I want to choose a, a place in the middle of a big area of colour, and I'm just going to paint over that a little bit, and also the areas around it, just to try and keep the grain consistent around the whole area, because grain is really a very visible in this image. I'm just going to take some colour that's a little bit close, close to the top, it's a little bit darker, I'm going to match the tones around it a little better. And a slightly bigger brush just to start evening out some of that grain. And once again, I'm pressing very lightly. Oops. Once again, I'm pressing very lightly. I'm just sort of doing little circles, lightly pressed. Don't go into the uh, main body of the image. Don't want to take any detail off the subjects of the image here. Just want to... We're sort of smudging out and blurring out the uh, the grain in the, in the water here. And blue, uh, in particular, is one of those colours that does tend to show up grain more than the other colours. So you'll find that skies, um, and I guess, uh, not that I'm uh, experienced in underwater photography, but uh, this kind of underwater photography is going to be very prone to this. And I'm just picking up a bit of the face there by accident, so just pressing undo and trying those edits again. And just softening that out. Nope, picked up a bit of face again. And let's let's Rather than keep you guys sat watching, oh, there's another hot pixel there, look. Just press J, zap it and it's gone. And I think that's pretty good. I'm just looking around on the left hand side there. The transition's fairly smooth. That's not, oops, right clicked by accident there. The transmission between the darker and the lighter is fairly smooth. I'm just going to grab another little bit of light and I'm pressing very very lightly on the, on the pen now and just multiple strokes you know lighter multiple strokes and layer it in and I think that's looking pretty good that's that's a good place to leave it for now um, that's going to be the source image for the next step of this and I think the next thing we need to do is to work on producing the cloud layer that's going to go behind it Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.